see when you're kind of befriending these people and hearing these stories and were you ever in that sort of situation where they said, right, I'm going to snatch a child today or bringing childs to you? Right. The, 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 only, the, the time that really, I would say, uh, and, and it's only ever happened once in the whole time I've been doing this in the country, and that was when we, um, I befriended somebody and we eventually uh, moved into a particular network. Mm. And when we moved into this network, on the day that I met these people for the very first time, and there were six of them, they brought a 12-year-old boy into the flat and they wanted me to have sex with that boy. So what do you, what happens there then? So, again, what you've got to do is um, you always think child safety because if you think about it, James, if I, if I allowed that boy to be sexually abused, what would the public think of me? You know, I've... I've Are you no different? I'm no different, am I? So I have a duty of care to that child. On the flip side... When I'm out and about spotting with, with a predator, I have a duty of care to that predator because if he's going to get assaulted by somebody, I have a duty because he's in my presence. I'm a police officer. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, it's a difficult one. But certainly um, in a flat with a child, I have a duty of care to protect that child. Under no circumstances must anything happen to that child. Um, and, you know, that's where all the pressure comes then because you've got six men in there horrendous because i spent six hours in that flat we were seeing images they were analyzing me they wanted to know what i did how i offended blah 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 all that sort of stuff and then that they, they really are honed on to me and then the more i sort of get accepted more people were coming in so i started off with two males and then because i was getting on so well with them and because they were i was comfortable with them and they were comfortable with me six males are there then suddenly the main guy gives me a tour of his flat and talks all sorts of sexual innuendo with what, what they do with a boy and all this sort of stuff. And then eventually he says, look, the boy's going to come into the flat and, um, you, you know, uh, you're going to be the first one that's going to have sex with. Oh, a kid at 12? What, how did, where did they get the kid at 12? Because sadly there's children out there who are vulnerable, who are targeted, who are sort of like... Groomed. Yeah, they're basically sort of, all their barriers are broken down, whether it's gifts, presents, whatever it might be. Do you know what I mean? So, and then the boy is there and the, and, and the boy is used to that environment. Yeah, which is the sad thing about it all is you're expecting, that, you're expecting someone to come in who's going to be horrified, screaming and shouting, but there's no screaming or shouting because the boy, he, this was comfortable for him. This was his environment. Because he'd been so well sort of groomed. Uh, uh, a friend has actually just passed away. He released a book called uh, Meat Rack Boy, where kids as young as 10 used to be in Soho and he used to just yeah. get into cars with men with suits and uh, they accepted that life because they were abused at five and six years old where it became normal. Yeah, and of course, sadly, in them days, they were known as rent boys and, and you know, because and, and, I know the particular area in Soho that was used, it was only like a very short couple of streets, but... Again, you had all sorts of people going there, picking people up. So when you're put under that sort of pressure at that environment, how do you how do you defuse the situation? Right, well, it, what happened with this particular one, we had a bit of a clue that a child might come into the flat, and that was introduced to me by, by the main guy that I met. And I met him on a bus for 20 minutes. This is how it all started. Um, and then once we befriended and once we got on and, and, and bit various things developed, then as we're driving down, he tells me that I might be here a lot longer than I think because there's going to be a, a child coming to the flat. Now, I've got an operational team around me, um, so I sort of like create a sort of like a little bit of a delay mechanism because I need to tell them, look, there's going to be a child coming into the flat, so we need to plan for when I say something, you've got to act on it. And, and, and the story I basically had was that I used to look after my mum and I was a carer. But if I'm going to be late, then I've got to make a call to get someone else to look after the care responsibilities. Do you know what I mean? So, and because I had introduced that from the moment we're traveling down to actually in the flat with the main guy, and he tells me, you know, like, 
we might have a surprise, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I might have to tell, you know, uh, someone about my, my care responsibility. Oh, yeah, we know all about that. So that's all natural. Do you know what I mean? So when the boy, I know the boy is going to come in, then I've got, it's about me creating the right time to actually say what I want to say to the operational team in full view of all the suspects um, and then hope that they can get to me. So it's all about timing. It's all about, I make the call, the child's going to come in. Thankfully, the main guy ushers the boy to me. He's got his arm around me. I've got my arm around him. So I know he ain't going anywhere. I know I'm protecting him because I have a duty of care to that boy. And then what I've got to do then is just delay everything, slow everything down so that as time goes on, I know the police are going to come in the house. Now, that's where the pressure is like, it's through the roof, James. It's through the roof because I've got six predators there who are absolutely, they've gone. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're sexually sort of so perverse and active. We'd spent six hours looking at all these sort of child images. The computer's a wash of, of um, material. I've got evidence all over the over over the floor and all this sort of stuff um and yet at the end of the day i've got to hold this this boy and i've got to protect this boy i can't take back sadly i can't take back what what's happened to the boy previously do you know what i mean it's the here and the now i've got to all i know is that whilst i'm here no one's going to touch him and that he's safe um and and but then it's a cat and mouse game because at some point i've got to make a decision because if the police don't come, then I've got to come out of role. So I've got to come out of role and say, right, okay, people, just to let you know, I'm a police officer and you're all under arrest. Is that, that how... No, if, if that, yeah. no. But that's, what, that, that's what's going through your head. Yeah. Going through your head is, I've got to save the boy. I've got to protect him. No one's going to touch him. The police know about it. The police are coming. Why aren't they here? Because time just slow. Everything slows down and it's like... And no matter what I, how I try to create the the actual incident in the book, really didn't do it justice. Because if if I if I said how it really was, I don't think anyone would have read it. That fucking poor boy, man. Yeah, twelve years old. <sighs> so, and then of course the police come in, and then it's like it's a relief, isn't it? It's a relief that the police have come in. Everything gets protected. Boy gets taken away, and, and that's it. But yeah, you, you, you know, your you, your heads. I can't. It was fantastic being in that environment purely because I was seeing these people how they really were. Do you know what I mean? Evil, evil people who who are who have no real sort of like compassion for children. Remorse, nothing. No, nothing. They, they just want to. They just want to have sex with this with this boy. Do you know what I mean? So. It was, it was, I know it sounds, it sounds awful, but it, it was great to be in that environment to actually see how they really were because I knew how they really were. They were dangerous. Um, they were horrendous people. Um, and, and really at the end of the day, I knew what kept me going was the fact that I know that you're all going to get locked up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's what, that's what keeps you going. And then of course, if you save one child, which obviously is, is the purpose of the book, um, you save one child, then it becomes an obsession. You want to save more. Do you know what I mean? You feel as though, well, hold on a minute. I've been in, in the most horrendous situation. I know I can do this. Do you know what I mean? And that's what keeps you going. Yeah, I can kind of understand that, but that you've seen a 12-year-old kid where you've saved them from being raped from yeah. grown adults where you think, if you walk away now, how many more kids have you let that happen to? Then you sort of blame yourself because I'm trying to understand the method of thinking of going back to yeah. that madness and that that evilness yeah that... I, I think because what you what it is is you 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 save one child and you think do you know what I can do this because I've just done it mm -hmm. so I know that this is worst case scenario and and this has never happened since so in England and Wales we've never had this situation before um and it's worst case scenario it's what it's 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 an investigated officer's sort of nightmare to have like a child in a flat and you've got an operation going, like when are we gonna like arrest them, you know, because we don't want anything to happen to the child. Or you. Or me, 
Yeah. But but child comes yeah. at the top. Fast, yeah, of course. 